Tonight, uh, we have a guest with us, and uh, a couple years ago, uh, we invited Pastor Choco de Jesus to come and to speak at our Arise Shine conference that we hold in May. And uh, I've known of him for many, many years from a distance. Uh, he was, once upon a time, he was on the cover of Time Magazine as one of the most 100 most influential leaders in America. And uh, because of what he and his church have done in Chicago over the years, he, for many, many years, has led a growing multi-site church in uh, Chicagoland area, a powerful, powerful church, and uh, God has just blessed them incredibly. So when he came, he brought a message that just stuck with him. How many know you'll hear a message, it'll just stick with you? And uh, he brought a message, and I'll never forget the phrase, it was, give it up. He just walked around the room talking about how he acquired buildings and just prayed, and he said, give it up. And so Pastor Rick and I walked around for the next two years downtown praying, give it up. And guess what? Downtown gave it up. So, uh, but here's the thing. He's, he's a man that I greatly admire, and he is a leading prophetic voice, really, in the body of Christ, and we are so honored to have him. He drove up from Chicago today to be with us, and so I want you to stand on your feet, Radiant, and welcome to the platform, Pastor Choco, as he comes. Well, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Before you sit down, I want you to turn to your neighbor and say, you look better than last week. <laughs> you may be seated tonight. It may not be true that they look better than last week. You can repent later. <laughs> what a joy to come back to Radiant Church. What a joy to be with your pastors. How many love their pastors, amen? Come on, give it up for Pastor Lee and his lovely wife, his family. And w when I got the call about coming here, there was no doubt I wanted to come back to Kalamazoo and, and be with you all and celebrate what you guys are doing. Amen. Listen to me. What you're doing is amazing. It's not happening all over the world. Uh, there are people who are playing it safe in the church world. They're playing it safe, but not your pastor. He has a vision, and he's taking his church through a vision. That's right. And I just get excited when I see men and women of God stepping out in faith, because God honors a church that operates in faith. Are you with me tonight? God honors and so I pray during your campaign that you will step into the more that God has for you. You hear me? Don't settle for less when God has ordained more for this church. Dream and dream big. Dream big. Win over the city of Kalamazoo. Declare those things that are not though they were and see what God can do. All God needs is a man or a woman, anybody, who would have the audacity to walk by faith. And so I pray for your church, I pray for your pastor and the entire team as they're launching out in this campaign for you all to build. We started with one building, and uh, in 2019, we ended up with close to 32 buildings, declaring buildings, having dominion. We would pay more than what the appraisal said. People thought I was crazy in Chicago. It wasn't the building that I wanted. It was the space. It was the dominion. It was having a, 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 a building that would be able to house ministries, dream centers, teen centers, shelters, so that New Life Covenant Church and Radiant Church would have dominion over Kalamazoo. So walk by faith. And see what God can do. Amen? Amen? Now, how many of you all were here the last time I was here? Raise your hand. Oh, wow. Let me just see it this way. How many were not here? You don't know who I am. You've never seen me before. Raise your hand. You've never heard of Father, forgive them, for they do not know my word. Where were you all at a few years ago? Well, I know the church has won many people, and people are coming to the Lord. I'm, a, I'm your pastor's friend, and uh, I was born and raised in the hood of Chicago. 
was the, the youngest of six in my family and did not know Jesus, failed third grade because I couldn't read or write. And we lived in the hood and, and God saved me at the age of 14 years old. I gave my life to Christ and uh, since then, I'm 55, 41 years later, God is still amazing me. That God has no limits. Eyes have not seen, ears have not heard, mind cannot conceive what God has in store for you. And so Elizabeth and I, let me show you a picture of my wife Elizabeth. This is a picture of my wife Elizabeth. Uh, we have been married for 31 years. When she, was, um, when she was 12 years old, I was 14, I asked her to be my girlfriend. <laughs> Come on now, I had my eyes on her when she was 12. <laughs> yes, yes. Uh, we didn't date until she was 17 and I was 19. And uh, Elizabeth is a worship leader, a great leader. Uh, loves the Lord, uh, sings to the Lord, and, and Elizabeth and I have three children. Let me show you my tribe. My tribe is your tribe now. I've got two girls and a boy. Uh, the last time I was here, um, I think two of my, the two girls were married, and now my son is married. So all of my children, look at me, they're out of the house. Glory to God in the highest. You got to go. You got to go. And so the greatest legacy I tell people that I can leave on planet Earth is not that we pastor the great church or Time Magazine or whatever, but that my three kids love Jesus and they're involved in ministry in Chicago. And so we're excited. Elizabeth and I, listen to me, church. I told your pastor today, we are living in the more of God. And so we get to see our children involved in ministry. We're grandparents. How many grandparents do you have in the house? Isn't it the greatest thing since sliced bread? I don't know why God didn't give us the grandchildren first. <laughs> and then keep the kids. Amen. But Elizabeth and I, we're grandparents. Let me show you a picture of uh, Charlie. This is Charlie Grace. So my mom, she's Puerto Rican, obviously. And my, you know, my mother's 80 years old. And I, I went to my mother. I said, Mommy, I got my first granddaughter. She says, what's her name? I said, Charlie. And she says, Charlie? Isn't that a boy's name? I said, Mommy, today, you know, they're interchangeable, the culture. Let's just move on, Mom. Let's just move on. And so then we got our second granddaughter. Her name is Reagan. Reagan Liv Hextrom. Blue eyes, white. I go to my mother. I said, Mommy, I got my second granddaughter. She says, what's her name? I said, Reagan. She said, Reagan? Isn't that a president's name? I said, Mommy, Mommy, we got to move. We got to move on. Let's move on. So this is Reagan Liv, and, and uh, she has blue eyes. She's white. <laughs> I said to my wife, Elizabeth, I said, babe, I can't go with these kids to Target. <laughs> They'll be like, aisle seven, aisle seven, grab them. <laughs> so here's my first grandson, my first grandson, James Anthony. James Anthony, and then uh, uh, this, this, that's Charlie's little brother, and now here is Donovan, which is Reagan's brother, and there, he's got blue eyes, and I'm like, oh, MG, I can't travel with these kids, and so we are excited, Elizabeth and I, we're excited, and our season of life, and what can I tell you, how God has been good to us, to the glory of God. I want to congratulate all those who got baptized Today, you have joined a team. When you got into the water, you exchanged uniforms. And you said, I'm joining the new team, which is the Jesus team. And so congratulations on that. And if you're new to this church and you're visiting and you came to visit, uh, witness maybe a loved one, uh, I just want to encourage you. This is a great church. I wouldn't drive close to three hours to get here if it wasn't a great church. Uh, but if you're looking for a church, stop looking. Root yourself. Grow in the Lord. Amen? Amen? Well, I want to give you a word tonight, and, and Pastor has allowed me to, uh, I've got two of my books, four, I have four books, but I only brought two tonight, which one is entitled Amazing Faith. If you're struggling in your faith, that's in the back. Um, amazing Faith, only two times in the Bible where Jesus is amazed by the faith of an individual. Two times. He's amazed by their lack of faith many times. The centurion soldier, that's one. You remember the story of the centurion. 
He came to Jesus and he said, you're a man of authority. I'm a man of authority. Say the word and my servant will be healed. And Jesus said, in all of Israel, I've not seen a faith like this man. The second person is the widow. The widow. Where do we find her in scripture? We find her in church. And, and if you know anything about baseball, three strikes and you're what? You're out. This woman has five strikes against her. But nevertheless, we find her in church. No husband. Her husband is dead. How do you know that, Pastor Choco? Because the Bible says she's a widow. <laughs> he would have had the job, so she is jobless. She's illiterate. 99% of the women in the first century were illiterate. So she has all these things going against her. But irregardless, she's in church. And when it came time to offering, the Bible says she gave everything she had. Do you hear me, Radiant Church? She gave everything. You know what she was saying to you all here today? Abandon your faith in money and put your trust in God. That's what the Bible says. And Jesus was amazed by her faith. The second book I have out there is called Stay the Course. America may be drifting, but the Bible is not drifting. The church of Jesus Christ is the greatest institution on planet Earth. It will not drift. I don't care what you hear on CNN or Fox News. The church of Jesus Christ is the greatest institution on planet Earth. Your father is not dead. He's alive and well. Uh, he's on his throne. So I want to encourage you to stay the course. Keep believing. Keep trusting. Keep giving to the Lord, to the kingdom of God. And God will bless you, I believe that. Tonight I want to talk to you about the presence of God. The presence of the Lord. Open your Bibles with me to Psalms 42, verse 1 through 5. Psalms 42, verse 1 through 5. If you're taking notes, it's entitled, The Presence. Psalms 42, as a deer pants for the streams of water, so my soul pants for you, my God. My soul thirsts for God, for the living God. When can I go and meet with God? This is a, this is a legit question. My tears have been my food day and night, while people say to me all day long, where is your God? These things I remember as I pour out my soul, how I used to go to the house of God under the protection of the mighty one with shouts of joy and praise among the festive throng. Verse 5. Why, my soul, are you what? Together. Are you what? Downcast. That's the question. Why so disturbed within me? Put your hope in whom? In God. Not in the United States. Not in any party. Put your hope in God. For I will yet praise him, my Savior and my God. A deer, a deer searches for water until his thirst is quenched. And the psalmist is comparing himself to a deer thirsty for water. The psalmist might have been watching a wounded deer desperately seeking water and he immediately thought about his own dry heart and wounded heart. Water is life for the deer. And the psalmist thought, I need God's presence as much as the deer needs water. Did you know here tonight that when a deer is dehydrated, it goes through stages, stages. For instance, when a deer is losing water, watch this, there is a dehydration process and there are effects that happen. Did you know here tonight that 60% of the human body, your body, is composed of water? Did you know that your brain is composed of 70% water? Your blood, 83% water. You say, well, what's the deal, Pastor Choco? I'm just trying to tell you that you're made out of water. 
that you need water to survive. And water is the only thing in your body that cannot be manufactured. Cells reproduce themselves. But the moment you lose water from your body because you're working out or whatever, you're sweating, you need to drink water. Are you with me so far? I haven't even started preaching. This is my introduction. <laughs> you need water. And the psalmist says in Psalm 42, as the deer needs water, so do I need the presence of God. And the more I pull away from God's presence, there are symptoms that occur in my body. Are you with me? What happens? What happens? Let's, let's talk about this tonight. What happens if you were to lose 2% of the water in your body? Here's some symptoms. Thirst, loss of appetite, dry skin, fatigue, chills, head rushes. If you were to lose 2% of the water in your body, these are some of the symptoms. Let's increase it tonight. What happens if you lose 5% of the water? Muscle cramp, extreme fatigue, headache, decreased sweating, Heartbeat, increased heart rate, heart rate. If you lose 5% of the water in your body, increase of heart rate. Let's increase it a moment. What happens if you lose 10% of the water in your body tonight? You know what would happen? You're about to have a stroke. You got to go to the hospital. Because your body cannot live without water. It needs water. And I started thinking to myself, OMG, the psalmist says, as the deer pans for the streams of cold water, so my soul long after thee. Is it possible that he as a leader was going through some stages? And it's possible that as Christians, as men and women of God, although you come to church, you go through stages in life. Let's go through those stages. Stage number one, what happens? And is it okay if I come down here? Is that right? Okay, do whatever. All right, great. Because I usually like to come down. He said, do whatever. I usually come down in Chicago and I start slapping people. <laughs> no, you're, you're good. You're safe. Don't worry about it. I won't slap you. <laughs> when a deer is dehydrated, it goes through stages. And you will learn tonight that as a believer... As a man of God and a woman of God in the year 2020, if you remove yourself from the presence of God, you will go through stages. There will be side effects. There will be symptoms. So let's talk about it. What's the first thing that leaves the deer when the deer is dehydrated physically, the animal? What's the first thing to leave? Is his capacity to see vision, number one. You have no vision. That's why 2020 is crucial. Look at me, church. 2020 is crucial because in human history, we will never have 2020 again. And 2020 means clarity. That's why it's important that you get in the presence of God and that God would give you clarity for your marriage, for your children, for your spiritual journey. But what happens to many of us is that when we walk away from the presence of God, we lose the capacity to see. You have no vision for your family. You have no vision for your marriage. You have no vision for your church. Praise God that your church has a pastor who has a vision about what's going to happen here. But across this nation, there are many churches that are existing with no vision. And the Bible says, where there's no vision, the people perish. Where there's no word, the people die. So imagine the deer, look at me, imagine the deer, there it is, no vision, can't see. Helen Keller was asked, what's worse than being blind? She's saying, having the capacity to see and have no vision. Having the capacity to see, but you have no vision. It's important that you, you clearly see your life, your journey. Where we're at in our spiritual formation, 
what God is doing in our lives, you need to open your eyes and see. And the psalmist said, as the deer pants for the streams of cold water, so my soul long after thee, O God. Is it possible that his vision was deteriorating because he walked away from the presence of God? Vision is imminent, is important. Number two, what's the second thing that leaves a deer when the deer is dehydrated? Did you know that a deer, that a deer can run, some deers can run at around 40 miles to 45 miles per hour? And did you know that a deer can jump 10 feet? 10 feet. That's why when the lion's going after the deer and the deer's in all cylinders, the lion's like, I'm done, man. I can't follow you. I'm done. And that, that deer is up in the mountain, jumping, jumping, jumping. But when the deer is dehydrated, it cannot run. And when a man of God and a woman of God is dehydrated spiritually, you can't run. I don't care what you said about Joseph. He was not dehydrated. He was a man's man. He took his dream in a towel and he says, I'm out of here. Not dealing with Potiphar's wife. And what's happened in your life is that you walk funny. You used to get to church early. And now you're hoping that worship and the offerings are already done. <laughs> and slide in. It's not, it's, it's, not, it's, it's not the smoke. It's not the music. It's not the lighting that is dark. It's that you have left God's presence. And that's why things are impacting you. That you don't, you don't see like you used to see. You don't run like you used to run. You don't walk like you used to walk. But because you've walked away from the presence of God and somebody didn't shake your hand or the pastor ignored you or whatever. And you're out out there in the, in the parking lot as a lost sheep. You walked away from God's presence, and my friends here tonight, when you do that, there will be symptoms. There will be symptoms in your life. Third, when a deer is dehydrated, the third thing that happens to the deer is capacity to talk. That a deer can talk to other deers, but because they are dehydrated, and they can't talk. It has been said that you can hear a deer two miles out when they're at that stage number three. Help! Just screaming, but they can't talk to their other family members. Can you imagine the lions that are around there and they're hearing this and they know that the stage of this animal where they're at? Dehydrated. The presence of God. You know what would make the difference of God? You know what, what would make the difference in your life in 2020? What would make the difference in your life is the presence of God in your life. That will make the difference from everyone else is God's presence in you. And when God's presence is in you, you are different. You talk different. You smile different. You give differently. I'm just saying. When God's presence is in you and you have your eyes and you can speak and you can walk, there's something about you that's different. And other people are play hating. I got it. But you just stay in the presence of God. Water makes the difference. What was it in John? In John. Remember the woman at the well? And she comes to Jesus and Jesus said to his disciple, I must go to Samaria. I must. Listen to me, church. Jesus said, I must go through Samaria. Jews would never go through Samaria. They prefer to take another 30 miles, but not to go through Samaria. But Jesus said, I must go through Samaria. And then the Bible says that Jesus goes through to the well. And there he is. He's chilling. He's chilling. Because he has an appointment. And the Bible gives us, and I'm paraphrasing, the Bible says that the woman comes, she comes at noonday, at 12 o'clock in the afternoon. Women would normally come at 6 in the morning, 6.30, before the sun rises. But this woman comes when it's the hottest time of the day. Maybe it's her lifestyle. Maybe the girls from the community don't like her. 
because of her lifestyle. So you know what she says? I'm going in noonday. I'm going with my bucket and my cup. And I'm going to go get some water. So she comes. She comes there. And sure enough, Jesus is there. You and I know he's the living water. I'm going to say that again. And it was a good time for everybody to say amen. Everybody say, <laughs> you and I know that he's the living water. Amen. We know that she is physically looking for water. But Jesus said, I must go through Samaria. I have an appointment with this woman. So she, he's sitting down there. She comes in her bucket la, 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 and her cup. And sure enough, she's like, who's this? And Jesus said, Jesus said, woman, give me something to drink. And she says, you're a guy. I'm a woman. You're a Jew. I'm a Samaritan. We shouldn't be talking. Yada, 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 yada. And Jesus said, oh, for the love of God, I just wanted a cup of water. <laughs> By the way, if you're taking notes, this is the longest conversation in the Bible between Jesus and anybody. It's a woman. Because he must go through Samaria. Give me water. You have nothing. She goes on and, and she, Jesus said to her, boy, if you only knew who's asking for water, you would ask me and I would give you water and you would never have to come back to this well. And she thought she was slick. She said, give me some of that water so I don't have to come up here at noonday. Oh, you want water? I'll give you water. And he gives her water. He says to her, go get your husband. She says, I don't have one. Jesus says, you're right. You've had five. And the guy you're sleeping with is not your guy. Now, mind you, you and I know that water cleanses. And Jesus is giving her water. He's giving her truth that can go through the penetrate, the crevices of a human heart. You want water, Mija? Let me give you some water. I'm going to tell you who I am. And she's drinking this truth. Listen to me. She's drinking this truth. No one has ever told her her life. She drops her bucket. She drops her cup. She's drinking this water that she's never tasted before. Because water does that to you. Come on now. How many of you have ever been really thirsty and you get that cold water and you're like, glug, glug, glug. And somebody's saying, like, give me some. Nope, I ain't giving you that. Glug, 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 glug. And it just goes right in there. You're, oh, my God. It feels so good. That's what truth is. And we live in a culture today that doesn't want to know the truth. Now, I want to tell you here this evening, truth doesn't set you free. Knowing the truth sets you free. Amen. The Bible says you will know the truth. And the truth will set you free. So you need to know the truth. That Jesus is the living water. And that he makes the difference in your life in 2020. That if you're going to grow spiritually, you better stay close to the water. Because the moment you walk away from the water, everything bothers you. My preaching bothers you right now. <laughs> That's what happens when you walk away from the water, God's presence. Why was it that young Samuel, when he was in the temple, and Eli, the priest, the Bible says that he was in his normal place, and he was sleeping in his normal place, which was not the presence, but Samuel was by the ark, which represented the presence. The kid knew. If I'm going to be a prophet or a pastor or the youth leader or children's pastor, I better stay in God's presence. It's my prayer all the time. I say, God, if your presence is not with me, I don't want to preach. If your presence is not, I don't want to sing. I don't want to lead worship. I don't want to play an instrument. If your presence is not with me, I don't want to have church in Chicago. Shut this thing down. It's your presence that makes the difference. And as God is expanding this church, may you always yearn. Presence. And as you grow, 3,000, 4,000, five campuses. Presence. 
Because we were in a high school for 10 years in Chicago. We were in a high school, y'all. We went from a small little building of 300 people running four services, and we all grew that building. And from there, we had to go to a high school that hold 1,000 people. And we went from three services to four services to five services to 17 services. So you don't need a building to grow a church. You need God's presence. And we ultimately started building and build a building, and, and that grew. And we started opening up campus, two campuses, three campuses, eight campuses. Why? Because God's presence. And the more you see God's presence, look at me. The more you see God's presence, there's going to be people here who are going to sit at your seat. You hear me? Don't get upset if you come one Sunday and someone's sitting at your seat. It's not yours. Okay? You know, you know how some people are, not, not this church, other people, other churches. Because <laughs> if you're really a church that seeks God's presence, he's going to send you people who don't look like you, who don't walk like you, who don't dress like you, who don't smell like you. Are you okay with that? Yeah. Because his presence will draw people. And there's a world that's thirsty. For the living water. And you have the living water here in Kalamazoo. You have the living water. And there's a world out there. That's drinking bitter water. Your family members are drinking bitter water. And the woman she drank that water y'all. She drank that water. She dropped the bucket in the cup. And you know what she did? The second thing. She, she ran to the town. To the town. She went, come, come, come. Now you imagine, you know, the girls, the women who didn't want to go with her at 6.30 in the morning. They're like, what is she doing? You know, people are. Because she's not part of their Facebook group club. Because of her lifestyle. But I want you to know that this woman is converted to a proclaimer. She is now a proclaimer. And she's an evangelist. Running to the town. You need to come. I know you don't like me. I know you don't like me. I know I hang out with your husband. I got it. I got it. I got it. I got it. But something happened over here at the well. You need to come. You need to come and meet this guy. And the Bible says that the town came and they heard Jesus. And the town said to her, we now believe not because you said so, because we have heard. We have seen it. And this woman became a proclaimer. The presence of God, Radiant Church, as God is expanding your ministry and God is leading your pastor to continue reaching Kalamazoo, I pray that you guys will blanket this community. Blanket this community. I lived in a Chicago, one of the most liberal cities on, in the United States, I was like Israel, surrounded by all these 200 million Muslims who didn't like me. But I, God's presence was with us in our church. And the church has grew. You know why? Because we yearn for his presence. God, we need your presence. If your presence is not with Stage number one, you lose the capacity to see. Stage number two, your capacity to run. Stage number three, you lose your capacity to talk. Number four, if you're taking notes, here's what happens. When you are at stage number four for a deer, did you know that a deer, his body will open up his pores? When the deer is dehydrated and has already gone through these stages, The pores open and sends out an aroma of death. I'm in stage number four. I'm going to die. I'm dying. And what happens to a man of God and a woman of God, they go through these stages. And some people will tell you, some, your children will talk to you. Men, men, your children come to you. Dad, you don't, you don't worship like you used to. They are recognizing that you are in a stage. Mom. 
You don't smile like you used to smile. You don't sing like you used to sing in the kitchen. In your car as you're taking them to school or going to work. Why? Because you are now in a stage that you've walked away from God's presence. You've allowed things to get on you, to stick on you, to cause bitterness and hatred and so forth. That now everything bothers you. And you're in stage number four. And you stink. You stink. And this is what happens to us when we walk away from God's presence. We stink. And no, let, me, let me illustrate to you. This is how it would look like. This is how it would look like. If the deer is in stage number four, stage number four, and he is dehydrated, his vision is gone, his capacity to talk, to run, it's something like this. Desperately. I need water. I need, I need water. I'm dying. Ah! I'm dying. And little does he know, the predators are getting closer to him. The animals know. The lions know. They smell it. They hear it. And when a man of God and a woman of God is going through these stages, the enemy knows. You better get back into God's presence. Whatever you got to do, do it. Your wife has been telling you. Your children has been telling you. Your husband has been telling you. It's, it's, it's not me. It's not Pastor Lee. It's that you've walked away from his presence. Now I understand it. As a deer pants through the streams of cold water, so my soul long after thee doth flee. Where are you, God? I yearn for you. You remember, you remember when you were that desperate? You remember when you first fell in love with Jesus? You wanted the keys to the church. <laughs> Pastor, I'll open up. I'll clean the washrooms. I'll get here early. Now, after a few years, you're like, take the key. <laughs> Something has happened to you. Something has happened to you. You don't look the same. You remember in John, in John, when, when Peter, I'll come back here for a moment. When, when Peter, in Luke chapter 5, the Bible says that Jesus comes down to the lake, lake of Gennesaret. In Luke chapter 5. And, and that Peter's there, and he's, he's, you know, he's rolling up the nets, and he's been fishing all night. He didn't catch anything. And John, after the denial of Jesus, what does Peter do? What does Peter do? Let me give it to you. Here's what he does. He goes back. He goes back fishing. Fishing. By the way, when I get to heaven, after I see Jesus, he's the second guy I want to talk to. You, is Peter. I'm going to holler at him. I said, bro, everywhere I saw you in the Bible fishing, you never caught anything. <laughs> Why didn't you change profession, become a tax collector, a doctor like Luke? But in John, after the denial of Jesus, he goes back to the boat. And I started thinking, wow, why to the boat? And you automatically think, well, he went back. He went back to what he knows. Hmm, that's a possibility. But what if he went back to where he first got called? Where I first got my passion. Maybe I can reignite it. Maybe if I go back to the boat, I, I, I will feel what I felt 10 years ago, two years ago. So let me go back to my boat and hopefully... Something will happen. And the Bible says that Peter is there. And, and like normal, he didn't catch anything. And that Jesus was at the shore. And he's like, you know, essentially saying, oh, yeah, hey, friends, have you caught anything? Now, you and I know that Jesus, no, he didn't catch anything. But the question is relevant. It, it's important. The question is important for you to understand. 
And Jesus is making the question to Peter, have you caught anything? And one of his disciples in the boat says, oh, this is Jesus. And notice what Peter does after his friend tells him, you know who's at the shore? It's Jesus. Peter, impulsive Peter. Put my foot in my mouth, Peter. Got his towel, and he dove inside that water. He dove right, he got all wet. This is what happens when we're so many years in the boat, and we're not in the water. Where you swim, and you feel the presence of God. Disturb me, oh God. Disturb me, oh God, when I've accomplished my dreams because I dream too small. Take me back to the place, you remember? Take me back to the place when I dove in, when I was all in. But I've been so religious now, I'm on the boat. I don't want to get wet. It's too cold. It's too cold. It's too cold. Don't splash. You, remember, you know how that is, remember? When you're, that's, that's why, you know, when, when, I don't know how you guys are. My kids are cycles. When it comes to water, cycle. It's not from the Lord. They, me, on the other hand, need to pray about this. The kids are, come on, Pop, come on. Hey, hey, this, you, you, when you get 55, you need time. You, it takes me at least a good half hour, 40 minutes <laughs> to get into this water. But when I'm in it, I'm going deep. And it's in the deep, church, where you will see miracles. You will receive your assignment from God. There are millions of people in the shallow. But there are only hundreds in the deep. You want to see a miracle in your marriage? Go deep. Dive in, get wet, go all the way in with the Lord. 2020, it would be the year of clarity for you. 2020, it would be the year that your worship will be different. 2020, it would be the year where you will walk straight because you're in the presence of God. Come back here with me. I'm finishing now. Watch this. So here he is, the deer. And here's what happens. Here's what happens. They told me it was clean water, so praise the Lord. <laughs> you already know. There's a smell. You already know. I, I can't see. This is the stages. And he's looking. He's looking, looking. And the deer finds a body of water. Deers are different from dogs. Dogs. How many have dogs here? We have two dogs, two pit bulls. Well, they're not really Elizabeth and I's. They're our children. But we raised them. How many know that, how that feeling? I thought, hey, hey, I thought this dog was you guys. Why am I walking it? Anyway, that's I want to pray for me on that issue. Thank God we left to Missouri. Dogs, dogs drink water different. They laugh. Dogs drink water that way. Not true with the deer. Not true. Did you know that when a deer finds the body of water, it doesn't drink water? Doesn't drink. You know what the deer does? The first thing it does, it jumps in the water. And the deer, when it jumps in the water, it starts taking a bath. Because the deer knows, I got to get this smell off of me. More important to vision, more important to me talking, more important about my walking, I need to get the smell off my life. And the only way I can get the smell off my life, if I get into the presence of God and take a bath in his presence. And the deer goes into that water, jumps in, look at me, takes a bath, takes a bath. 
Because it's been a long time, years, that I haven't taken a bath in God's presence. I have, my walk has been impacted. For the next 10 years of your life of Radiant Church, may you always stay in the presence of God. May you take a bath in his presence. When you're worshiping, may his presence be what you yearn for. Moses knew it. Moses knew. He said, if your presence doesn't go with me, I ain't going to Pharaoh. He understood God's presence makes the difference. And you should understand here tonight that it makes the difference in your marriage, in the life of your children. God's presence will fix your kid. Let me, let me finish with this. My son, you know, my, my three kids, they were they're not born with halos. But people think kids, pastor's kids are, you know, they, they just came out of a Canberra belt of like angels. <laughs> not true. Not true. At least in my case, not true. You know, you go through stages as a father. I'm a father and I'm also a, a husband and then I'm a, I'm a pastor. So my son went through a season in his life. Marijuana. Acting dumb. Being an idiot. <laughs> and he was in high school, junior high school at this time. The Holy Spirit says, go look in his car. I go to his car and I see smoking stuff and marijuana. And um, I took it out. Obviously, as a father, I'm broken. This is not what we taught him. But I, I, I got it. I go to his room, open the door, threw it on top of his bed. And he knew. He was caught. And after like a good 30, 40 minutes, an hour talking to him, I said to him, Pito, I said, do you think you're stronger than me? I said, Pa, you're not stronger than me, boy. I will pray this out of you. I will be here every night. You have no idea how I will knock on heaven's door. So you need to understand, you can never get me tired. You can never, you know, going up, ah, close the door, go to my room with my wife. I said, man, babe, I'm tired. This is exhausting. <laughs> so we put oil over his door, put the blood of Jesus, started sprinkling water. We started fighting in the spirit realm. We declare God's presence in his room. God's, that he would go to sleep and the presence of God would engulf him. Because sometimes you got to just force people to take a bath. And you will take a bath in God's presence. And you saw the picture. He's now a youth pastor. He's 26 years old. And that was a period in our life. But it was God's presence that made the difference. As a father calling heaven down to intercede and to intercept my son. The woman at the well knew that she was drinking some good water. Jesus says to you all here in Kalamazoo, I am the living water. Radiant Church, may you see clearly in 2020. May your worship be different. May your giving be different. May your walk be upright and straight. Any general knows, any army knows, before we invade a nation, we need water for our troops. So if we're going to invade Kalamazoo, we need God's presence. He's going to give you the keys to the city. I declare those things. I declare and decree that the keys of the city will be given to you. But how bad do you want his presence? How bad do you want God's presence in your life? Would you stand with me for a moment? Stand with me. Remember the prophet Elijah. He went with his 
you have Elijah and Elisha. And, uh, and he went to the prophet and said, hey, before you leave, give me a double portion. He said, boy, you asked for a hard thing. When I leave, you can pick up. And he picked up the mantle. And when he crossed over the Jordan River, you remember that? And he crossed over the Jordan River with the double portion, with the mantle. What was the first thing the people asked him from the prophet? They said, could you change this water? Because we're drinking bitter water. Can you change it? And he's a representation of the church. And there are people in this community saying, can you change this water, Radiant Church? Can you change it? Because my children are drinking bitter water. The only way that would change is that we get in God's presence and we're filled with his presence. With every head bowed and every eyes closed all over this place, those who are watching online, if you're online, 2020, may vision come to you. May it be clear to you what God has for your life. May your eyes be open tonight. May the smell of death be removed from you. You will not die. I'm talking to somebody here tonight. You will not die. You will live. I'm talking to somebody here tonight. Whoever has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit of God tells you. You will not die. How many of you here at the sound of my voice would say, Pastor Choco, I'm in stage number one. I have no vision for my family, my life. I know we're in March, but I need God to give me a vision for my family. Pastor Choco, I'm in stage number two. My walk has been impacted by some decisions I've made. Or maybe you're in stage number four. There's a smell over your life. Tonight, the water is flowing at this altar to remove this smell from your life. How many of you here at the sound of my voice would say, I'm in stage one, I'm in stage four, three. If that's you, lift your hands quickly. I wanna pray for you right now. Hands are going up, hands are going up. As you lift your hands, may water fall upon you. The, the coolness of the water of God. I'm gonna give you 20 seconds if you raise your hand, I want you to find a place at this altar. I want you to leave your seat. I don't care if you're in the middle. I want you to leave your seat right now. Do that right now. Give me 20 seconds. Get out of your seat. Come. Find a place at this altar. This is the well. And the living water is here. Jesus is the living water. Come. 15 seconds. I won't stay here long. Come on, 10 seconds as we sing. Come, five seconds. Church, would you extend your hands forward? Come. Every single one of you all, camera people, sound people, ushers. Amazing things are going to happen in Kalamazoo. Because there's a body of people who are calling on water for this city, this community. In just a few moments, our pastor is going to come and he's going to lead us in a prayer. But come on, right now, I want you for the next few seconds, take a bath. Take a bath in his presence. Do that right now. Come on. Come on, open your mouth. Open your mouth. In the name of Yahweh. In the name of Yahweh. In the name of Jesus. 